So, I did something kind of crazy last month. I challenged myself to fatten beef cattle to market weight without buying a single bag of expensive concentrates. Zero. No commercial feed, no premium supplements, nothing from the feed store. And I'm not gonna lie, the first week, I thought I made a huge mistake because, yeah, it looked rough. But then on day 12, something clicked. The cattle started gaining at the exact same rate as my neighbor who's spending three times more on his fattening program. How? Three ingredients you probably already have access to, combined in a specific rotation that tricks the cattle's metabolism into hyper-efficient gains. The first ingredient is dirt cheap, like embarrassingly cheap, but it does something to protein absorption that, okay, let me back up. Because if you're watching this, you're probably facing the same nightmare I was facing two months ago. Feed costs eating up your profit margins, watching grain prices climb every single week, and wondering if there's any way to fatten cattle profitably without selling a kidney to pay for concentrates. The industry wants you to believe there's no other way. But here's what they don't tell you. Your cattle's digestive system, specifically their rumen, is a 400-liter fermentation tank that can convert almost anything fibrous into usable energy and muscle if you know how to optimize the microbial environment inside. And that's where most ranchers get it completely wrong. They think more grain equals more gain, but that's not how ruminant biology works. In fact, pumping cattle full of expensive concentrates can actually slow down the natural fermentation process, creating acidosis, reducing fiber digestion, and, ironically, killing your weight gains. So, here's the system that changed everything for me. Ingredient number one, molasses. Yes, simple, cheap, blackstrap molasses. Now, before you click away thinking this is too basic, hear me out, because the way you use it matters more than what it is. Molasses contains around 75% total digestible nutrients and it's loaded with rapidly fermentable sugars. But here's the secret. When you add just 2-4% to of the total ration as molasses, it does something incredible to the rumen microbes. It provides instant energy that supercharges the bacteria responsible for breaking down fiber. More active bacteria means more volatile fatty acids produced, which means more energy absorbed, which means faster, more efficient gains. I mix molasses with water, about one part molasses to three parts water, and I drench it over low-quality roughage. Corn stalks, rice straw, whatever fibrous material you have that's normally too low in energy to support good gains. The molasses transforms it. I watched cattle that were maintaining body weight on plain straw suddenly start putting on one and a half to two pounds per day once I added this molasses treatment and we're talking about spending maybe 15 to 20 cents per head per day. Compare that to three to five dollars per head on concentrates. You see where this is going? But here's where 90% of people mess this up, and it cost me four days of progress when I first tried it. You cannot just dump molasses on feed once and expect magic. The rumen microbes need consistency. They adapt to whatever energy source you provide, but they need three to five days to build the right population. If you're random with it, you shock the system, you get inconsistent gains, and you waste money. So I committed to drenching every single evening, same time, same ratio. By day seven, the difference was visible. Shinier coats, more rumination, bellies full and round. The cattle were literally unlocking energy from feed that was previously passing through them undigested. Now, ingredient number two, urea. And I know what you're thinking. Isn't urea dangerous? Can't it kill cattle? Yes, if you're careless. But used correctly, urea is the most cost-effective source of nitrogen you can provide. And nitrogen is what rumen microbes need to build protein. Here's the deal. Cattle don't actually need protein the way we think of it. They need nitrogen, so the microbes in their rumen can manufacture microbial protein, which then gets digested in the small intestine. One pound of urea provides the same usable nitrogen as about six pounds of soybean meal. Do the math on that cost difference. It's staggering. But, and this is critical, you must mix urea into the ration at no more than 1% of total dry matter intake. For a cow eating around 25 pounds of dry matter per day, 
that's a maximum of 0.25 pounds of urea, which is about 4 ounces. I mix mine into a salt and mineral blend to ensure even distribution and prevent any single animal from consuming too much at once. I use a ratio of 1 part urea to 9 parts salt and mineral mix. This forces slow consumption and keeps toxicity risk at absolute zero. The results? Cattle on high-fiber diets with added urea showed nitrogen retention rates similar to cattle on protein-rich concentrates, but at one-fifth the cost. I'm not making this up. The science has been around for decades, but the feed industry doesn't exactly advertise it because, well, they'd rather sell you that protein tub for 60 bucks. And here's the thing almost nobody talks about. Timing. You need to introduce urea slowly over 7 to 10 days, starting at half the target dose. This allows the rumen microbes, specifically the urease-producing bacteria, to build up populations that can safely convert urea into ammonia and then into microbial protein. Rush this and you risk toxicity. Respect the adaptation period and you unlock a protein source that costs pennies. Now let's talk about ingredient number three, and this one surprised even me. Brewer's grains, distiller's grains, or any wet byproduct from local food processing. Depending on where you live, you might have access to citrus pulp, beet pulp, apple pomos, spent grains from breweries, or bakery waste. These byproducts are often available for free or dirt cheap because the producers need to get rid of them. And nutritionally, they're gold. Wet brewer's grains, for example, contain around 25% protein on a dry matter basis, and they're highly palatable. Cattle absolutely love them. I partnered with a small brewery 30 minutes from my ranch. They were paying to have their spent grains hauled to a landfill. I offered to pick them up twice a week for free. They saved money, I got high-protein, energy-dense feed for nothing but fuel costs. I feed about 10 to 15 pounds of wet brewer's grains per head per day, and the cattle devour it. The combination of molasses-drenched roughage, urea-supplemented minerals, and wet byproduct grains creates a ration that's balanced, cost-effective, and scientifically sound. But here's the rotation that makes it all work together. Morning, free-choice access to roughage treated with molasses solution. Midday, access to urea-salt mineral mix. Evening, 10 to 15 pounds of wet byproduct grains. This rotation keeps the rumen environment stable, provides consistent energy and nitrogen throughout the day, and prevents the peaks and crashes you get with grain-heavy feeding. The cattle maintain a steady rumination pattern, they're calm, they're healthy, and most importantly, they're gaining weight predictably. Let me hit you with the numbers because I tracked everything. Over 60 days, my test group of 15 steers gained an average of 1.8 pounds per day. My feed cost per head per day was 90 cents. That's a total cost of $54 per head over 60 days for an average gain of 108 pounds. My neighbor, using a commercial concentrate program, spent $4.20 per head per day for an average gain of 1.9 pounds per day. His cost for the same 60-day period, $252 per head for 114 pounds of gain. He got six more pounds per animal, but spent almost $200 more per head. When you're running a hundred head, that's a $20,000 difference in feed costs for nearly identical results. Let that sink in. Now, what are the mistakes you need to avoid? First, don't skip the adaptation period. Whether it's molasses, urea, or wet grains, introduce everything gradually. Second, don't forget about water. High molasses and high protein rations increase water intake requirements. Make sure clean, fresh water is available at all times. Third, don't ignore body condition scoring. Not all cattle respond identically. Monitor individuals and adjust as needed. And fourth, don't assume this works without good quality forage as a base. You still need fiber for rumen health. This system enhances low-cost fiber, it doesn't replace the need for roughage altogether. One more thing, and this is huge. Mineral balance. When you're not using commercial concentrates, you lose the built-in vitamin and mineral premixes, so you must provide a quality loose mineral designed for beef cattle. I use a mix with adequate calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, copper, zinc, selenium, and vitamins A, D, and E. This costs me about $0.08 cents per head per day, but it's non-negotiable. 
deficiencies in trace minerals will wreck your gains faster than anything else. So here's the bottom line. Fattening cattle without expensive concentrates is not only possible, it's profitable, sustainable, and scientifically backed. It requires a shift in thinking, from ingredient-focused feeding to system-focused nutrition. You're not just feeding cattle, you're feeding the trillions of microbes in their rumen that do the real work of converting feed into beef. If you found this valuable, do me a favor. Subscribe to Biggest Bulls and Cow right now because we're building a community of ranchers who refuse to accept the industry's expensive playbook as the only option. Drop a comment below and tell me, what's your biggest challenge with feed costs right now? Let's problem solve together. And if you know another rancher who's struggling with the same issue, share this video. We rise together, we learn together, and we build better, more profitable operations together. Let's keep pushing forward.